<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, we'll, we'll try to move through this as, as quickly as we can tonight. We've got a lot of material to cover. So this is this is the May 10th um, Finance Committee, Town Kaifen Town Finance Committee meeting. What we're here to do tonight is to come up with our final recommendations to take to the full council for deliberation next week, next Wednesday night. So with that, I'd like to kind of call it to order. And those present, we have Chris Gazza will be joining us. He is in transit. He is stuck between airports or in an airport somewhere between here and Detroit. Um, he thinks he'll be here at about 4.30. In the meantime, Bill is, has joined us at the table. Um, so with that, um, the approval of the minutes, did we? To approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? So I think with that, what we're trying to do, at least, at least, and, I, and I'll check with my peers on both sides of me, I think when we had met as a joint finance committee meeting, we, we first really wanted to kind of talk about all of us at the town council at first read, committed to wanting to see what a 3% overall budget looked like. So what we've asked both the town manager and su superintendent tonight is to deliver to us the types of things that would get us to that 3% budget. So I think we're going to review the municipal budget first. I think the town manager has come up with some suggestions and recommendations, mm -hmm. and then we'll pivot to the conversation on the school budget. So with that, Tom, what, sure. where would you like to take us with? Yeah, the directive I was given at your last finance meeting was uh, was to model what it would look like to make a series of cuts uh, to reach the 3% the target. Uh, and if I understood my instructions correctly, uh, that would include starting with a $750,000 cut that would get all the way there on the town side, a $500,000 cut, 375 and 250. Uh, those lower amounts are two thirds, one half and one third. So um, I thought long and hard about how best to approach this and I listened carefully to, to Julie last week. Uh, I'm really um, cautious not to one upset staff unnecessarily. Um, I didn't want to be too granular and specific. Um, and also not be accused of kind of scare tactics in terms of uh, specifically putting up programs. And so I've adopted a similar approach by um, considering the, the cost of uh, an average town employee, that's salary and benefits alike, and, um, and what it means at those different, different levels. And you'll see that on the sheet in front of you, it's the uh, landscape version, it's the top portion. It's a surprisingly similar number, it's uh, 76,000 on the town side. I think the school is using a $75,000 number. Uh, and that's just by total coincidence, I think. Meaning, meaning the average cost of? Yes, that's all in, salary and benefits. And that's below uh, the deputy director level. So I didn't include the higher, higher level for, for this analysis. Um, certainly, if this goes further, I would need to be very specific as to where those come from. But my sense from the conversation last time is that this was kind of a higher level discussion to understand kind of order of magnitude. I guess the other thing I'd say, there are some incremental investments that I proposed in the budget and that are still there. Uh, by and large, I would continue to maintain that those are important and I can justify them in their own right. So if you're looking for my recommendation, um, uh, of course, I would reconsider them again. But um, I look back at them and still feel as though they are smart investments for the town in terms of uh, meeting service demands and also increasing productivity and just efficiencies. Uh, and those are the sorts of trade-offs and choices that uh, we have to make in formulating the budget and uh, certainly when we look to reach certain targets. So I'm not sure if that's exactly uh, meets with your expectations. It's unfortunate Councilor Chiazza was in here as he's, he was the one that requested the information. Um, and I'm pleased to respond uh, beyond that. I guess before I yeah. stop, I'll just say the bottom portion of the, the page are a series of specific uh, adjustments that I, I would suggest you find some time to look at, and I can speak to the validity of each of these, but these are ones I would offer up for your consideration. Um, so so to, get, to be clear, the, the bottom, you've got a list of four or five items here that total 176,000 in direct reductions to the budget. I think these are a lot of things that not all of us have attended all the meetings, but I think between all of us, we did have conversations around most of these things mm -hmm. at the meetings. Is everybody comfortable with these items that Tom has itemized here? Uh, so I do want to ask, what's the acronym KRT? I forgot. That's the consultant's name. Oh, consultant. That's the <coughs> Doing the, the commercial review. Yeah, right. yeah. <coughs> so 
So that would reduce up above then, this is, this is what's, where I'm not good at math, just call it 200. Okay. So you've got 200 mm -hmm. of these items that it sounds like, anybody want to have any discussion on, it's 176, I, I, was, right. I was rounding up, so yeah, okay. it's just easier for me to do the math. Yeah. Um, so I guess, any questions on those? Yes, yeah, so, so you've included the municipal capital equipment of uh, reducing expenditures with the consultants regarding the revaluation? Yes. That in essence stops the revaluation? Not at all, no, it's a better estimate. We went back to them oh, okay. uh, at budget time, uh, at the proposal uh, time, we were working with the best estimate we had. We've uh, since gone back to them and they've refined that number. Okay. So this is the same project, it's, it's just a okay. better number. Okay. That's all I had. The only thing I would comment is it, it pains me to uh, not move forward with the planning board uh, in, uh, renovations uh, because I th I've gone over that downstairs with the folks down there and they're excited about it. And, I know. Uh, but these are hard decisions, so I'll say my mea culpa is to them when I see them, but I, I'll support that. I share in, in the, that sentiment. Yeah. And I guess I'll defer to my colleagues. I had some other items. Maybe I'll just mention them quickly. And if there's any interest in talking about them, we can talk about them. If there's no interest, then we'll just move on. Okay. Um, one was just in the exec, and I'm kind of going by tabs, one, one right down through. So the executive, there was a, a, a significant wage increase. I don't know if we want to, uh, Tom, you and I had a conversation about that, whether you had any thoughts about that or, or changes. And, as I said to you in our conversation, I'm pleased to repeat that here. Um, yeah, the, the salary increases for Larissa's position, um, I think it's entirely justified. Uh, this committee, frankly, more so than any other, must appreciate the value that she brings to, uh, to the whole organization. Uh, we've been able to advance things that we've talked about for years, frankly, and it's due entirely to her, her efforts. Beyond that, there's uh, great aptitude in the area of communication and now fully staffing the ordinance committee. So uh, I really view that uh, there's department head level work and I think there ought to be commensurate pay uh, with that. But you, we had some conversation about phasing or something, but that's not I, timing, I would, I would timing. prefer, I would frankly prefer if, if the budget can tolerate it that we, we make this move, the work is being performed and I, I think it's deserving at this point. So if I could ask, uh, you said that there was a discussion on phasing, so I'm not familiar with that conversation. So what's phasing? It's just this? a private conversation whether yeah. we can do it in multiple steps and timing. How, how do you do a pay increase on a timing basis? So you either do it at the beginning of the year or you don't? We could phase it in over multiple budgets, I think was the suggestion oh, okay. I understood. Right. And, and I guess my preference would be to, to do it all at once the work is, uh, is being performed as we speak. I, I guess I would go along with the town manager's recommendation. He's the one who has to see oversee the assistant town manager on a daily basis. He sees the value of the contribution uh, uh, this last week, not this week, but the prior week. Uh, I certainly saw the value of her contribution and, uh, and appreciated it very much uh, above and beyond. So I, I guess I would say I'd, I'd prefer to go with the town manager's recommendation on this. I would trust it. Um, so I, I absolutely support. Um, the, the question I have is, that, and I apologize in a way because I look at it from a, a different per, uh, level of perspective. So I look at it from um, all HR perspectives or all uh, employees. So I don't know if there's other adjustments that you have around labor um, issues, whether it's health benefits, uh, salaries. Um, I kind of have to, I mean, for me, I have to look at the manager to try to determine whether or not are we at market rate, do we have a, um, are we, sus um, what's the word, are we suspect to um, losing a very qualified person across the board, no matter what the contribution might, or what, no matter what the kind of the individual part is, whether it's benefits, I mean, everyone has different reasons why they want a job or not want a job, so I have to kind of trust the manager to determine what is that, you know, best placement for us, so. Um, uh, without, uh, uh, and I, I'm smiling. I mean, she's sitting right there. I know. I, I mean, it's, it was just more of a the, the value she's brought to this process has been absolutely incredible. So, um, but I'm trying to make it into a bigger picture issue for all employees. But um, uh, I have to take the I have to take the recommendation of the manager in order to retain qualified employees. 
have to. Okay. The other two items, I have, or some other items, had as we talk about wherever we end up on the numbers and the adjustments, and we're talking about maybe not having enough in meeting, we may have to go the, the other suggestion. But in the budget is a full-time position moving from part-time to full-time and the addition of another full-time staff or contract services that equates to about that. Is that, again, just raising the question if that's the right, if we have a choice between adding staff or reducing staff, is that a place we want to go? Is there an appetite, or are we good? Um, so for the reference to the budget under um, line items, do you know what page or what, what uh, department is it in? So I can at least go to the finance, page. And finance, and, and Tom sure. will have the particular. Okay. It was replacing a part. There's a part-time position that you want to go to full-time. Correct. That's in the excise office. Um, essentially, we're going back to where we were about three years ago. We had a full-time person leave. We tried to fill that position with two part-timers with limited success. We really struggled to find qualified folks that were able and willing to work those limited hours. And so uh, we're proposing to go back to the, the full-time position. Uh, the other position referenced was some additional contracted services, uh, not an employee, but outside assistance for some of the field uh, pickup work and, and assessing. This is all the new construction. Uh, each of those properties needs to be visited uh, to collect the, those, the new information to establish the new values. How much is is that issue? Twenty-seven thousand. Yeah, twenty-seven thousand dollars in assessing, and uh, allow me just a moment. I'll get you the finance. Finance will be two part-time positions. Oh, two part-time. We originally had three part-timers in here. How much was that? Seven K was assessing. What's the total? What's the differential? Yeah. Just trying to get a sense of the magnitude of. Yeah, I thought that full time staff position, Tom, it was more in the 80 ish range, was a number that I thought. So if it's only 27, that's a different scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought it would be in the drivers. Yeah, the difference is there's a $46,000 or so in new full-time pay and a reduction of 26000 in part-time pay in the excise office. So, so about can you repeat 20, that again? Uh, additional 46 in full-time pay and a reduction in 26 in part-time pay. That's including the assessing 7000 No, 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 that's, that's excise clerk okay. only. So it's an added 27. Yeah, 20-ish. Okay. 20-ish, and the other one, I believe, is 20, Seven. 27 so, for yeah. assessing. But that's not a full-time staff then at 27. So it's just no, it's a armor. contracted service. It's a it's okay. a local appraiser that uh, has provided great work for us, and we'd like to keep her on to do some of that field pickup work. Okay. So, so, uh, so, so I do have a question, and again, it's um, takes it to I hope to the next level. At what point do we talk about the demand when the demand for services, um, including accounting, finance, and things that aren't necessarily obvious to a lot of people? When do we have a conversation about what the value that brings and how we're going to then manage to it? Because um, everything that we do um, over time increases um, in the demand for services or for someone to help um, or that we hire another person. So I, I understand the question about you know um, the amount of money that we spend, but we need to look at an overall HR plan um, about, the level of, uh, about the level of employees that we have at each one of the levels and how do we support that so that we deliver the same quality, if not better, services than we have today? I mean, when, uh, I mean how do we have that conversation? Because I wasn't part of the, the I know that this was done um, six maybe years ago, and I was actually off the council at the time. There was actually a conversation about an HR plan and about the level of services um, and what they supported. So when do we have that conversation again? And we've done it on the interim for like the police department and the fire right. department because right. it's a different criticality. Um, but we haven't done it about the municipal services, you know, what's in the town hall. Um, so where do we have that? Um, because every year we're going to continue questioning a half-time employee or another full-time employee or contractor services, um, and then there's a gap if we don't fund it. Yeah, I'd say on town hall employees, I don't see that uh, the service demands are going to re require in significant increased staffing here. I think where you'll see it is in police, fire, and public works, yeah. uh, more roads, more calls for service, so on and so forth. 
uh, we can expect, and they each have their own staffing plans um, based on some of their modeling. I honestly think that the town hall staff, though there'll be some incremental changes, and you know, this one in finance is basically going back to what we had three years ago. Um, we tried to take advantage of a position open through attrition and come up with a, maybe a different way of approaching it, and we just have found uh, great difficulty in, in finding um, capable folks willing to work those. So is your recommendation that we maintain these items in the uh, budget as they presently are? Yes. Okay. I would, I yes. would accept that. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'm trying to get at, though, for us, is if, if we are committed to get to 3% and the other page has the only way to get there are layoffs of other people, what is the best way to, to deliver the numbers that we need to deliver? Not that we're going to do that, but I think the community has to hear what the choices are about if we don't get to 3%, what does that mean? If we do get to 3%, what does that mean? That's... So I think these things are just worth talking about, and we yeah. don't want to do anything with them at some. But it's 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 the it's a framework of what we got to work with. Um, just to totally respect that, absolutely, completely understand. It. But at the same time, the purpose of this exercise, we were very clear. At least I thought I was. I think Chris was as well. We wanted to understand what we're losing at the same time. And so this conversation is about if we don't do this, the quality of services can go down no matter whether you do it with um, 10 employees um, and you lose um, whatever those uh, services are or whether you do it by incrementally getting at it um, and doing these. In there's services that are lost and we need to understand the value of that too because it's very important in the conversation about the value of the entire community as a whole. But, but, but I think our struggle as a community is going to be these are specific, we know what these services are. Mm -hmm. On the sheet that we have, there's, there's anywhere from three to 10 positions. We don't know what services those are. So that, to get to your mm -hmm. point, that's, I think we were hoping that's what the community would hear, is, is what are you willing to trade off, if anything, or if nothing. So anyway, it's, it's no, I, I, I hear you guys where you are, that's fine. Um, the other only question I had was around community services. Actually, there were a couple pieces of equipment that were in operational expense. Don't know if anybody has any interest in that. There were about 15,000. Remind me what those were, because uh, I was here that day. Uh, one is a new trailer, so we can be more efficient. <coughs> put uh, all the equipment we need uh, to the remote areas in one, in one trailer rather than multiple trailers and vehicles. And the other one is a, a blower. It's a tow behind. It will help us with the entire campus. Uh, including uh, aeration that we'll be doing on the grounds. Um, if you've ever seen the turf aerated, there are the little plugs that come up, and uh, the, the method of pickup is to is to blow them into a windrow and pick them up that way. So, how much are we talking about? I think it's about fifteen. Yeah, uh, close 15. to thirteen thousand dollars combined for those two items. And those are expensed, even though they're capital assets. Yes, we conclude those in the operating they're, budget. They're still we're expensing them. Yes, they're yeah, in the we We're trying budget. to move stuff. Because as much right, as can. right. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's just a matter of timing. Is that so? Any uh, appetite? You guys good? <clears throat> it's thirteen thousand dollars in a ninety million not dollar counting. budget, so it's very it's, difficult for me to comprehend. Although I, I'm not adverse. But to if somebody said Do you want to capitalize them, I go, well, not yeah, adverse. they've got a five, ten year life. Well, yeah. So. Uh, I mean, that, this is a good point. I, on the back side, I just provided some highlights. This budget, among other things, um, funds an extra $452,000 through appropriation uh, than we did last year. It's a principle that, that I've heard from this uh, committee right along. Uh, the line share of that, of course, is the reval. But uh, I think we're trying to be very thoughtful yeah. about uh, expensing these items as opposed to, to financing them with any method. And uh, that's been increasingly difficult, but we need to be committed to it and mm. keep going. So the balance that what, what you bring up is to me a uh, more of an uh, philosophical line, and that is that um, I was not here, and I apologize for not being here for the community services budget. But I'm going to have the same um, our, uh, same discussion or the same comments that I've had for every year I've been elected to this council, and I think that um, the community services budget is a budget that I classify as an enterprise account um, in which the revenue source um, is subject to market demand and that we should capitalize on that demand and that 
Um, I didn't focus on revenue, Peter, so I apologize for not being prepared about your recommendation. But I look at the trend that the Community Services Department has, and that is that um, their costs are increasing greater than the increase in their revenue sources. Sure. This past year, their revenue sources increased 33% um, of that came from beach access. I'm fine with that. It should be. It's a commodity. I mean, what we offer on our beach services mm -hmm. is a commodity. But um, child care, which is going up in the market, is not going up. Community service programs um, is not going up. And I think that they should, in comparison to other communities, and should um, be a revenue source. Um, and and if, in, if in, in, in essence, should at the very least cover its increase in, um, increase in costs. Um, but I'll, I'll temper that by saying that I also recognize that our community is also in a very different place right now than it has been historically. And I'm not sure how far I want to actually make this argument as the basis of an overall budget. Um, but I just think that it needs to change because the percentage of what is being funded, and by the way, historically there's always been a contingency in town that says that the services that community service provides, which is absolutely astronomical because it supports the schools and us, um, that there's a portion that should be covered by the tax base. I philosophically disagree with that. If it can be covered by consumer demand and by the demand of the, cert of the fees, then it should because it decreases the amount on the taxes. Um, so I, I, and, you know, I'm just I, tempered I, in whether I'm going to argue that all the but, way through to the final end. But uh, see, I, I agree with it. I think that we should continue to move uh, to for recreational style uh, uh, discretionary spending towards self-payment. Uh, rather than tax payment. And we're not quite there yet, but I think that we should continue to, uh, I thought they made a good effort with uh, some of the beach expenses that are incurred, made a good effort this year in that direction, and I, and I applaud it. And so I, uh, I think we keep going. It, we're not there yet. I agree with you that uh, we got a ways to go. This did come up. Um during the budget review process, and I, I think I failed to respond to an information request. Perhaps Peter received a copy from Larissa in my absence, but I'm not sure if it was uh, supplied to the rest of the finance committee. This is just a quick little overview on the cost centers. Uh, I think it speaks directly to the issue you raised. And I, I guess the point I would make, Councillor Baybine, is if you look at the far right-hand column, mm -hmm. those four items, there's five, but uh, four essentially, um, are the, the cost centers, if you will, under the community services budget that are covered, that are covered by revenues. And I think it's worth just talking about them. Uh, obviously, you've got the administration piece. Perhaps some of that can and should be covered by right. user fees across the spectrum. Uh, the second large category, building maintenance. There's no one to pay the bill for that. That's, uh, you know, the, the maintenance of this building and utility costs and, and also 29 mm -hmm. Black Point Road. There is a lease, some lease revenue there. Uh, grounds maintenance, 569000 That's predominantly through our shared service relationship with the school. We get things in return. We've not yet um, kind of monetized that, and I think that's a project we need to undertake uh, over the coming year to, to really understand how that's work, working. And the final one is senior programs. This is something that's still fledgling. Uh, we want to make sure we, we uh, uh, are ever expanding our membership, and I know there's really a conscious decision um, at the Senior Advisory Committee uh, n not to price ourselves out so as to bring mm -hmm. in more membership. So I understand your point. In theory, I would agree. To the extent we can, we should use, have user fees cover these costs. But there are stranded costs that will be very difficult for us to close that gap entirely. Yeah. And, and I don't believe you're going to close the gap entirely. I'm not suggesting that that happens. I mean, in a, in a perfect situation, I, absolutely. But the gap between what I'm talking about is $76,000. It's not two hundred and fifty. I mean, you're increasing beach fees to be able to cover some of that margin by 33000 which is disproportionate. There's no increases in, in child care, even though the market is increasing in child care expenses. I have a nephew um, retiring from the Army. He's coming home, and he's got four kids to put in a daycare center. You ought to see what they're getting now. Um, and, and, you know, even though it's before and after school, it's not completely a daycare program. It's very similar, and I just... And it's not a low-income program. It's no. a revenue-generating program. No, and, 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 and a fact, lot of people in this town sit there and question, why is town government providing a daycare and why, without making a lot of money on it? Well, and, and I just fact, think that do. that's an opportunity. In fact, we do. 
Uh, and we're sensitive to the market. We don't want to underprice. So we are. We think our pricing is consistent with the market, <coughs> not significantly lower, so as to uh, <coughs> draw business away. We want to be out there and competitive. Uh, and frankly, <coughs> we're at capacity. Uh, we we can't handle any more kids. Uh, it's a function of space at the schools. I, I agree with you that it <coughs> deserves a discussion. I'm not sure tonight is the point, but yeah, I, it, I I would think that the finance committee. Uh, in the off season, would take this up, and it's been, and it's been an issue. Because yeah. looking at this sheet, I go, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Grounds maintenance, you know, that's uh, and building uh, occupancy and maintenance. That those are not things that I would have said a soccer fee should cover, you know. Or, right. So, what we haven't done there's there's no uh, there's no proper accounting for what we're getting in return for the grounds maintenance. Uh, for that, we get use of the fields and the facilities inside, and there's a value to that. We've not monetized and calculate what that is, so that's just yeah. our expense at this point. So, okay. so I just kind of try to go through a list. The only other items then turning to capital, because at the same time we're, we approve the capital too. Um, some of the things I had already, we've already talked about ground ready, or we've already talked about the remodel. Um, the other two items, I don't know if you were there for community service. Yeah. Uh, Sean, but there was a, a four by four crew cap pickup, forty five thousand that's used predominantly on campus. Is that what Todd had said? The four by He's four pick. There's one that's rusted, can't get a sticker, which is right. in the budget to be replaced. This is a, and it's only got. We drive it about four to six thousand miles a year, and it's got sixty thousand miles on 62, it. Sixty two thousand so. miles on it, I believe. Yep. So just wonder if that can be pushed. I mean, it's not a big deal, but don't know if there's any appetite for that. Is it appropriate. Just, no, that's this that's, bonded. That's to be bonded. It's bonded. There was that item, and then there's a new walker mower. Those are two items, and then also an improvements for community service were a restroom study and a ball field study. And those were, Tom, you said those were appropriated? Uh, walker mowers oh, appropriated. Oh, they're reserves, right. The restroom studies reserved, and the field studies appropriated. And, and, and just the reason we're going through this, we were, we're still trying to get that number. We're going to, at the end, we're going to talk, and Sean brought it up, is... We may have to add something back to the budget, the overlay for, you know, pending. So, so again, just trying to find, are there some places we can find the budget that we can push things or defer things that help us? Um, if there's any appetite for that, and then the only other thing I had is we did have a conversation with $100,000 for the phase one of the library study, but based on the campus master plan, we're not quite sure when that's going to happen. Um, Tom, we did have a question and you mm -hmm. answered it that at least as I understand it, that if you do a study, it has to be somewhat directly tied to a project. A physical capital project, yes. And there may be a bonding issue with it, which we can determine between now and... Yeah, we will. Our, our bond council scrutinizes that. That's a, a new and evolving, uh, I don't know if it's IRS or SEC rule, but uh, they're really starting to get very particular. This past year, our bond council questioned a couple of our projects they ended up qualifying, but we would check with them first. And frankly, if if you authorize it through the budget and bond council says it's not eligible to be bonded, we don't move it forward because we don't have funding authorization. It would come back around. So again, the only question of that is just, as we look at that master plan, I think there's a lot of, contro not controversy, a lot of conversations, which comes first, the community center or the library expansion. There, there is a time limit to the studies. Any appetite for these things? Or are you guys good with where we are? So, so I, I need some clarification. I don't have it. Because uh, there's uh, two, uh, you, you lumped a, a bunch of pieces yeah, together, and then there was an, so on the operational side, as far as the equipment, you talked about a four by four cab, the walker mower. Yeah. Um, walker. Something about a restroom study, um, which I never understood how you can study restrooms. But, um, <laughs> and then there's something about field studies, which I can understand that one. Um, so the 4x4 four four cab was bonded. The Wacom mower was appropriated? Yes. The restroom study was res uh, Res reserves? Beach reserves. So it's cash, in essence, right? Fund use. And then the field studies, were they also? Appropriated. Uh, appropriated. So I'm trying to understand the, the, the kind of the net effect of all of those put together. What would the net effect on the budget be? Um, so let's say we... Um, um, we took all of them out based on Peter's recommendation. Mm -hmm. What happens to the budget? Because I mean, bonding—you're only talking about a fraction of the forty-five thousand. Yeah. Uh, reserve funds is hundred percent cash. 
only two items are appropriated, which is the walker mower and the field study. So to all, all in all, what is the impact of the budget? What does it do to decrease the overall expenses on the budget for the year? Well, the value of the two appropriated yep. items are 18000 and 10000 So there's 28 right there that would go directly to the bottom line. Yep. Um, I can't, perhaps Ruth can, um, estimate what impact uh, the truck would be because it's a bonded item. So you're right, it would be an increment of that. It wouldn't be the full 45000 well, yeah, That would be bonded probably no, no more than five years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about right? I mean, right? So, but, but, but so about too, Sean, is it just impact on this year's budget? But I said it. Right, but it's next year. Yep. That Then it becomes part of our debt service, which yep. then... Well, a portion of it would come into this year's debt service. Correct. In FY19. Depending on when it, it, yeah, depending on when it gets purchased. Yeah, but depending on when. Yeah, I understand. I, yeah. I understand yeah. that. Um, the question I have, though, is that um, does it achieve or does it get us um, um, only um, – this piece only helps us get to the total if you then agree with all the other changes that happen because otherwise by itself it's too small to have the impact that I think that you're looking for. So if it's $28,000, you know, I think the original estimate was that in order to get to less than 3% before the consideration of the reval, we need $750,000. Correct. We are so far from seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that I have not seen a clear path to getting to that level. Well, if you accept my recommendation, you're one hundred and seventy six five two right. twenty two closer. Do, do you have a recommendation on on the ones that Costa Hayes just mentioned? I mean, I scrutinized all of these. They they kind of passed my initial test. Um, I think if I had, was pressed, uh, the field study is something you probably could wait. That's something that we've been talking about for years in coordination with the schools. It's really about the school, the fields behind the middle school, and so it's it's really a school issue in terms of use. Um, I, I don't mean to dismiss it because of that, but I think that's something that we could live with, uh, and perhaps we could get a, another year out of the pickup. Um, I've just learned to listen to our vehicle uh, maintenance supervisor. Uh, he has been proved himself spot on when he says something is r ready for a cash infusion. Yeah. Uh, he's typically not wrong, so I. Could we make it another year? I suspect we could. Might we have to I spend so. some money? What's that? I can. So what, what? No, I was. Uh, I mean, uh, given the conversation, it seems. Um, yeah. That's it's reasonable that we could um, not. You know, we, we could oversee or uh, overlook and not do those items. I just don't know. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I have no idea what we accomplished by not doing them. Let alone, I'm not sure what we accomplished by doing them. I mean, a restroom <coughs> study and a field um, a field study. But I, you know, I agree. It's just, you know, the town manager's recommendation, I think, is influential. And yep. if he thinks that we can add that to the 176000 that absolutely, then I would say yes. He's okay with that. I, could. I mean, Todd Seuss is here. He's certainly more in tune with those four particular yep. items um, than I. I. I don't know if you can and I, hear and from and him. And that's it. I don't, uh, in the scheme of priorities, I don't like to throw an item under the bus just because right. it happens to come up, uh, it, 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 to me, you look at more what, what are the highest priorities that could be deferred. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sort of asking you, does this fall into that category of Will we survive without that, the restroom study? That, I would think so, but it's reserve money anyway. So because yeah. you looked at yeah. hard at every one of these, so you know the ones that were close to the line, mm -hmm. and those that are not close to the line. Sure. But so, but Bill, I just, so, I just, I just want to make sure we're, we're, if our goal is to get to 3%, that's, you know, I'm not saying that's where everybody's going to land. But if we don't do some of these things, the, all the only other alternative we've got on the table are positions. And so, can we live without our rest? You know, I mean, they're not a lot of money together, but if it saves a yeah. full time position, is that meaningful? I, I, that's just well, something. I don't have the answer for that, but those are, those are our yeah, options. I, mean, I already know we're going to get to between zero and one percent, or zero and minus one percent. So I already know that. Well, so we, this I have a very hard time with this discussion. You 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 know that because you're assuming the town's going to accept using all the rebound monies to defer to defer. Well, the town the, accepting it is the seven of us. Well, not well. That's the, so, that's the decision. So, okay, so um, if you don't mind, I'd like to um, suggest that we focus on um, the requests around the equipment before we get to the revaluation. That's a different conversation. Um, I'll be honest. The reason, um, if, if the manager um, 
can suggest that we can forego those for one year. I'm okay with that as a balance. And the reason is that the one piece that hadn't been brought up was about the $100,000 library. Uh, I will state today, if that is not included in the budget, I will actually not vote for this budget. We have made this promise to the library for the last four years that I've been back on this council. They deserve the chance to be able to make their argument to this community and why their services are needed or the expansion of the services are needed. It is not fair to play games continuously with, those, with these groups. And they've known that, they've accepted it. They actually backed off when we, no, when we told them that, that we needed the public safety building. Um, and I, it, this is their time. And the $100,000 is not just a simple study. It's also a feasibility study to determine what is necessary for their fundraising capability um, or us to support that as well as the expansion and everything else. So if this is, if I need to compromise and say that the equipment pieces are part of that to be able to achieve some compromise, I, I will accept that, Peter. Um, but I will not will not compromise on the library piece. It's not fair. I tend to agree with you on the library piece. It, it has been a high priority uh, in my mind amongst the capital projects yes. for a long time. It got subordinated to a public safety building for reasons that probably were justifiable. Yep. Uh, but this is a project that has been before the voters since 2006. Uh, and so, uh, and when you look at the value that's gained by the $100,000, it's for studying how to best affect uh, a plan. And so it will have value beyond if, if we do not have a bond that is approved in 2019-20. Uh, uh, this information will still be valuable, whether it's in 2021, 2122, it will still be uh, largely as valuable then as it would be immediately. So I, I would support you on that. So to kind of move through this, so we have, trying to summarize, we've got Tom's yep. bottom here, his recommended changes, which are 176, 522. Um, is there some motion about additional adjustments to that that we just talked about? Yeah, I, I, the ones that we just spoke to. The equipment. Uh, yes, the two pieces of equipment. Yeah, I. So well, there's I'll, two equipment and two studies. Two, yes. I don't and, know what the net and, dollar. And one of the studies is funded by reserve. Whether that matters to you, it, it will have no effect on the bottom the bottom line. But I just wanted. I would exempt that then from the motion because it is being funded by reserves, has no effect on the tax rate. Pardon? I don't know which pickup truck it is. It's the four by four crew cab. It's, it's the one that's got 62,000 miles on it. And on. that's going to be bonded as well, so if we remove it out of here, we remove the bond revenue out also, so it has no effect on the bond as well. Thank you for pointing that out. Bond, we, we estimate bond revenues to cover The money that I'm comes into sure us, we say we need to borrow forty-five thousand. The bank yeah. gives us forty-five thousand. Well, yeah, we got to pay so on service on it next year. So what she's saying is that on this tax rate comp sheet, you'll see a forty-five thousand dollar equipment cost, but then a negative forty-five thousand dollars is reflected in what's listed here as bond revenue. So it's a zero impact yeah. on the tax rate comp sheet. And then in subsequent so, years, you'll yeah, see yeah, the debt yeah. service piece yeah, yeah, come yeah, on so for it. Yeah. So we're so was that the the motion was so. I can suppose. Okay. What, whatever that total comes up to that you tell us, I will support and second the motion regarding removing the 4x4 crew cab. I think it was at 45000 is what they're yes. yeah. Which is bonded, the, the walker, uh, mower, and then the field study. The, in the red? Was the no, the because restroom the restroom was uh, reserve funded. Mm -hmm. Will that have any impact on our... Do those reserves show up in the total reserve so that we... No, because they're restricted. It's, it's, restricted. Restricted. It's, yeah, a it's the reserve. beach reserve account. Right. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Okay, so that's going to be what this committee brings forward to the town council for the municipal budget around operational revenue and expenses. The second question really becomes, and Tom, maybe you can walk us through it on how we fund. There's an outstanding potential liability. It's the overlay which shows up. Mm -hmm 
in the calculation. You've made a proposal or a thought. You've estimated what you think that might be. You've already got, in the numbers that we're already seeing, you've got 141000 in the overlay. Right. And you would need to bump that to something else to cover. Yeah, the, the overlay is a, one of the unique factors. It's really the domain of the assessor. The, uh, it's one of the final decisions that the assessor makes before the final tax rate is set. Obviously, what we need to raise through the budget process is a huge determinant, but the, the overlay is one of those final decisions. That 140 is a number that historically has been adequate to cover the average you know, annual abatement activity across the entire tax base. So what we're talking about is that we, we do, we are aware, we do expect we have some liability ahead of us with respect to the tax appeals. Whether that comes due in this fiscal year or not, I'm not quite sure. But having said that, it seems pretty clear to me that there's a liability that uh, is only about half funded at this point. Um, based on my best estimate, talking and, and members of council have been privy to this uh, level of information as well, uh, we would need about a, at least another $350,000 uh, to meet that expected need. Again, not exactly sure when it's uh, derived. And this committee talked about this, this matter. I would highly recommend we do that uh, by way of increasing the overlay amount. And so it really, interestingly, is not a matter in your budget order. It's not a matter, not a number you approve. But I think for purposes of all of us being very clear and understanding what impact that would have on the final tax rate, um, you know, We've modeled that, and, and I can share that with you. Um, I'm so, you just, so can you clarify one part of that statement you just said? Certainly. So you said it's a non item that we approve. So no matter what that value is, we don't approve it? Correct. It's, uh, again, the overlay's express purpose is to cover the expected yep. cost of abatements yep. over the course of the coming year. So who and approves so it? The assessor is the one that determines what that need is. And it's in the 100 to 150 range historically. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so if we direct the assessor to increase based on information regarding the tax appeal, um, can he say no? I, I don't know why he would. I think, uh, I think um, so it, it, this doesn't require any action on your part. But so, so no, hearing loud and clear that I'm you just, wish so us so to. You're, you're, to you're, you're saying part. that we can make a recommendation to the sure. assessor. Uh, so that in August, when he makes a judgment as to the level of coverage in the overlay line right. item to cover reasonably anticipated right. costs, uh, that he would, in all likelihood, take that into account. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, we're, we're always anxious uh, in that being one of the final numbers before the tax rate's set. We don't want to raise any more money than we think we need. I, I did. He wouldn't do this without some direction, uh, indication from the council that you wish that to right. be funded. I, I wanted people to understand that what we're talking about is yes. a series of lawsuits that have been pending for years, uh, in which we've already paid out four hundred sixty-three thousand dollars in payments, mm -hmm. uh, and it continues to go through the court system. It goes back to the Board of Adjustment uh, Assessment Review, and then it goes through the court system again. Uh, and it's been a very prolonged process. And there, there is the perception that, uh, based on the materials that have been submitted by our council to the Board of Assessment Review and to the Superior Court, that uh, we believe our liability is 463000 uh, but we, when the town manager talks about funding uh, liabilities, what he's saying is funding a liability risk. There is a risk that we could uh, require more funds to uh, be needed uh, in the event that the litigation doesn't go our way. Uh, it also, knowing, having been very closely involved with it for years now, I'm aware that this matter may not be resolved in the fiscal year we're talking about, which is the 2018-2019 year. So that as of June 30th of next year, when this fiscal year ends, we may not have paid out anything. And, and generally speaking, I don't like raising money uh, for things that are uncertain. But in this case, we perceive 
there is some liability risk, which is why the town council has been uh, engaged, we have engaged in, in negotiations uh, over this issue. So, and, and, and so the bigger, the bigger risk, I'm hearing all that, but the, but the other side of the risk is if it did become due next year and we didn't have the reserves, if, if we don't put it in now and raise, cover it, it would dip into reserves, and the impact that may have as we try to establish debt policy and other things, it could impact our bond rate. So I think the conversation was, one, in transparency, if we put it on the overlay, it's there, the information's there, that the, we collect the funds. If we don't need them, that's great. It goes into reserves, and we can you know, think about it in the future. But I think, it's, I think in, in spirit of transparency, we, at least in a prior finance committee meeting, it said, we think something should be reflected. And, and if the town manager has put forth their number, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the will of this group is. I would, you know, if what we've been doing is deferring to the town manager mm -hmm. to come up with a reasonable estimate of what that would be. I, You've I'd been be privy to all those discussions. That would fund the liability, the order of magnitude that we, I think there's some level of confidence in. Um, it remains to be seen whether that's enough or too much. Right. Uh, but I think it does make uh, sense it's very prudent to provide for that otherwise we would dip into reser reserves and I think that has other ramifications that uh, mm -hmm. would be unfortunate so is there a motion one way or, the other, or, or discussion no uh, so I'm, I'll make the mo I mean what the motion should come before the discussion good it doesn't, it doesn't matter on committee three no I, I totally agree I think that while it is difficult to swallow um, because um, so while we have made adjustments of about two hundred thousand dollars if we now add this, it will be three hundred and fifty thousand dollars higher. So it's hundred. So the budget, in essence, will be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars higher than what it was read at the first reading, which is counter um, intuitive or counterproductive to the entire entire conversation of getting to three percent. But I think that we have a fiduciary responsibility to be honest about where we are, what's going on, and what's happening. Um, and um, and I think that um, this is a reasonable approach. I do want to suggest a couple of cautioning statements. And one is that regarding bond issues or bond, and that is that while you can make an adverse decision in one year, it does not necessarily relate to an immediate decrease in your bond rating in the same year. What happens is that over, you have to be able to justify to the agents, um, the agency, um, that you have some type of, rec um, you, you will take some type of recourse to get yourself back into policy or back into place, which um, because you have adverse situations that always happen. Um, if you completely ignore your policy, then that's when you have an, um, a negative reaction to your bond rating. Um, we saw that, I think it was in 2014, when we went below policy on fund balance. We didn't see a decrease in our bond rating. We simply saw a leveling um, when, you know, um, things kind of happened. So, you know, we have to be cautious about what we say and then also how we kind of interpret that. So. Um, we just have to continue our due diligence that I think that the committee has always done over the last four years. Um, the other piece um, with that is um, I, I think it's prudent. You, you have to do it because um, it, it's the fact. But at the same time, I've got to put a uh, plug in there. I hope that everything is finally shared around this whole tax appeal and about the actual amount of the actual loss, which was only $14,000, and I'm rounding up, in which they were asking for $4.4 .4 million dollars and in which they are getting almost 800,000 plus. And I think it's absolutely a travesty that what the, 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 the whole tort system and um, what is going down this entire avenue. Uh, but it is what we have to deal with and as officers of the town, we have to plan accordingly and, and this is the honest, transparent approach to that. The other information will come out later, um, but I mean, this is sound policy. You have to do it, you have to do it. So, Bill, your question to the town manager, what's the number? Tom, what, do you have a number? I, I would say an share? extra $350,000 okay. should get us to our expected yeah. liability. So you've got now, from what we've just concluded on the town side, you've got the whole matrix now, sort of, of... We do, and yeah, I tried to anticipate kind of sequencing, and of course I got it wrong. Um, my middle, the middle conversation I thought would be around reval, and the last one would be around overlay. But nonetheless, yeah, we, we've got this modeled. Uh, perhaps Larissa can share that with you. Um, maybe we'll do it in two steps. Um, the net effect of the additional changes well, you've can, suggested. Actually, can I ask a favor? Um, only because I feel bad because we talked about, um, so we haven't addressed the school issue before we get to the, uh, to the, the reval. on the reval. I would think that we would talk about oh, the school's enough. expenditures, expenditures yeah, before we get to the reval since it's 
a subcomponent of the whole issue. Right, I agree. If, if yeah. do. Absolutely agree. I don't want to completely. Nope. Fair enough. Sorry. So, did I? Did we motion it? Did we approve the uh, overlay? I know. Consent no, we did not. So. So we'll, well, I'll make the motion that we approve that we recommend to the, to assessor, the assessor a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar increase in the overlay. It'll be modeled on the sheets. And yes. All those in, Is it an increase, increase or total? Second. All those in favor? Increase. Increase. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Round two. Round two. Okay. Be kinder to me, please. <laughs> um, so uh, the sheet that is passed out is a sheet that should look familiar to mm -hmm. you all. I think we discussed this. My days are kind of running together, but I believe we discussed this at our last joint um, school board town council finance committee meeting. We have some changes since first reading, none since the last time that we looked at this sheet. So um, what you see here is that there was a miscalculation in workers' compensation in the blue area there. Um, and then our anthem rates did come in higher than we estimated and um, Kate uses a five-year average to calculate that. And with us wanting to come in as low as we could for first reading, um, we um, projected lower than what we actually the premiums we're actually receiving this year, so that goes from a budgeted 5% estimated up to a 7.2%, um, and the cost is um, outlined there in that blue section. And then our Delta premiums also came in higher than anticipated at 3.2%. We budgeted for 1%. Um, and then there's some other corrections based on retirement projections and the benefit calculations, miscalculation that I, I talked about there. So um, all totaled, from first reading to second reading, we're looking at an increase in the proposed budget by $47,859. And then you see down below what that looks like in terms of the gross increase mm -hmm. expenditure. So we were just under three, and this brings us just over three. And then for the net education budget, brings us flat at six, and we were hoping to come in under. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the changes that we have uh, the reduction scenarios are very similar to what the town manager presented to you. We, as he stated um, so eloquently, our figures are very close. Again, um, my concern would be going in too much detail uh, at this point if it's just to kind of get a sense of the impact. The one thing I would add that's a little bit different on the school side if we're looking at full-time equivalents is that we also have a number of ed tech positions in the district and we typically budget for ed techs as we discussed between 42 and 45,000 um, when we're trying to project. So it doesn't necessarily mean, um, $750,000 reduction doesn't necessarily mean 10 classroom positions. It could be um, a variety of positions and some combinations of the two, but the math works out in that sort of way. Some other things that we could look at um, if it was the will of the council to reduce the budget in any sort of way at our um, IT expenditures. So we do not have a phase level refresh this year, but we were planning to do some district wide um, refresh in terms of equipment. Some of the um, laptops and things that our administrative team are using are a little bit older and uh, taking long times to boot up and just can't really keep up with us doing everything online now because we're totally almost 100% in the G Suite doing everything on Google. So that requires you to be online uh, pretty much all day and every day. Um, and that, and that, that was 218K, I think, in the, or in, 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 yeah, the, in the operating budget. There's, there is $217,000 budget in, in the operating budget. Yeah, um, 300 something. 312 in the capital? In capital, yes. Yep. Um, and so. Julie, were you suggesting that if you were looking for a place to save money, this is where you're at? Did I, I miss that? So I think that it just depends how low we need to go. Um, obviously, we're not going to get very far um, ticking nickel and diming different line items. We've already done that work for you in our previous handout where you saw the line item. Um, reductions at over six hundred thousand dollars. So for us, it becomes you know either not doing um, parts of the the district wide refresh or um, not filling certain positions or eliminating certain programs. So our athletics director has also priced out for us the cost of all of the um, programs that we 
currently offer, the number of students impacted, and the costs associated with that. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we start to look at those programs, we have Title IX um, that we have to keep in mind, so we can't eliminate, say, a female sport or activity without you know, eliminating male sport or activity. So again, it's just what's the number because um, it's not as easy as just saying we'll take that one thing. There's so much interconnectedness. If, if I looked at this and tried to put it in common parlance, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it looks like the um, insurance quote, premium quote from for health insurance from Anthem, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about. Uh, you had estimated that it was going to increase by 5%, but instead it increased by over 7%, yes. which is, drives me crazy. And last year it was like one Because that's out of <laughs> our control. Right. So that, and that's, See, that's, the, a raise. that's the 110,000 that creates the problem because then there were a workman's comp premium that is a negative 34,000. Right, came in lower than Came in lower. Than uh, and a formula correction, 32,000, came in lower. Uh, but the net of all that is that the budget previously presented is now $47,000 short. short. And you're describing some of the things that you would do if you had to deal with a $47,000 shortfall. Yes. Okay. Yep. And your budget adjustment shows this is a 3% increase in cost year over year. Yep. And that includes all of the commitments you have under your union contracts, the insurance, the crazy uncontrollable health insurance. Your, your increase for the whole budget is 3%. 3.06%. 3 okay, I, I just wanna make sure people yep. get what is being talked about here for your situation, because you're summarizing what was a lot of work to get to today. Yes, absolutely. So you started down a list of things that could be considered, and you started, <coughs> you, you talked about IT, you started to talk about athletic, pro did you finish the thought on the athletic programs, or was there, was there we interrupted you, that's all that, I'm trying that's to say. Okay. No, you didn't get all the way through the story. Already. I think um, what, what I was trying to say is that the Leadership Council and I are positioned to a look at those three large areas, general areas, the IT um, mm. costs and investments, the athletics programmings, and then also staffing. So um, once we know the number. What was the last one? Staffing. Staff. And you said in investments, that's so that you there's about a half million of investments. Some of it was you need to do for the special, special ed that we got additional revenue, but there were additional, there's about 135 of additional new programming there. Is that, is that what you're referencing when you say investments? No, no, okay. I'm, I was talking about the IT that you, that was inquired okay. about last so, time. So, okay. if, if we said, hypothetically, stick with the budget that you proposed previously you're going to have to find $47,000. You would then make a judgment as to how that 47000 would be covered. Because yes. it's, you expect to incur the cost, but you wouldn't have allocated the appropriation. Right. But, but I think the discussion we're trying to have, Phil, is if our goal was to get to a 3% overall budget but she, for yeah I, overall the tax increase of three percent my point was I'm not going to tell the school where to cut that they can't no no I'm not suggesting I'm not suggesting that that's all I'm saying yeah, I, that, yeah, yeah but I that, think the conversation we're trying to do tonight to take back to the full council where we can have this debate about what's the right decision for the community I looked at our role tonight was only saying really trying to is to, to outline for the council mm -hmm. what does getting to a 3% tax rate look like and have everyone's full input about what choices do we want to make. Mm -hmm. So if I hear it wasn't necessarily, so the combined budgets need to get to 3% in some way or the other. We've identified some on the town side, some 
<laughs> both ways. Now we're looking at the school. I think Julie has expressed to us the likely places they could go to to find that kind of money if that's what we're looking to do. I think, is that a fair statement to what, and, and I guess, uh, so do you have? So um, personally, I think we're combining two different meetings, um, conversations, because I don't think that Dr. Kuchenberger has actually addressed the 3% overall question um, that Tom addressed because she addressed that at the previous meeting in which she said that, um, to remind everybody, that basically in order, it's very similar analysis. Yeah. Um, in order to have a $750,000 adjustment, she would have to um, consider programming issues that impact, uh, I believe it was 10, 10 teachers, and then it was incremental, very similar again to our side, uh, probably different, you know, different programs, different departments, and different considerations. Um, you know, where on the, you know, on a t the way I look at it is on the town side, you know, it's not like you can um, get rid of, um, and I hate to say it that way, but um, uh, eliminate two police officers um, and then one sanitary district, and, you know, or not district, it's uh, one public works, because if you're going to get rid of two police officers, you really need to get rid of four, because that's one whole shift, and there's different considerations right. in each, just as I'm assuming that on the school side, you're talking about a program, you, you know, you're not going to, like, cut the program in half. Um, yeah. And you can't just like say, oh, we'll make right. that a point eight FTE because then you have employment challenges of right. retaining. So, the so I, so I think that we combined a little bit of the two because what she's addressing today is just what is um, the circumstances she's undertaken since the last meeting, where she's already provided the analysis on the seven fifty before. Whether there needed to be more conversation around that, um, I don't know. Um, I thought it was very clear at the last meeting what she said that what the impact would be. What I wanted to suggest was around the request for the 47,000, and I, I hope this comes across pretty balanced, is that given the current environment, I would hope that the school department would be able to find the $47,859 within their budget and not ask us to make an amendment to increase it. Um, I just think that um, it, it levels some emotional issues around the, bu um, the budget process. Um, so long as I can be guaranteed that we're not reducing programs. Because one of the things that we have always talked about through the entire process, even with the 3% goal, is that we want to maintain the level of services that we have, both in uh, the quantity of services and the quality of services. So as long as that can happen, I, don't, I really don't want to be in a situation that we were in, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, time flies fast, where all of a sudden we're being told X grade sport is being cut and then all of a sudden we have these... Um, teachers and the students and the parents all upset because right. um, that doesn't help the community especially right now um, so I hope that there is some judgment used in that and I think that in a 50 million dollar budget being in business myself you can find forty eight thousand dollars to absorb I mean, it's hard I understand that but I hope that we're kind of at the point the issue about getting to the three percent I think is totally separate from what is the, this presentation um, it's about the temp it, it's about the ten positions or whatever incremental kind of pieces are around that and whether we want that in our school system. That's a different to me, a conversation. Would it be um, fair to ask, um, to be able to present to you specifically what the 47, where the 47,859 would come, where it would come from at our next joint meeting? I, I don't mean to be dismissive, but that's the school board's um, decision. Okay. Because even if you it's presented it to or? us, um, I sat here when um, all day kindergarten I uh, went from half day to all day kindergarten, and we were told, um, yeah, we're going to cut the budget and it's going to remain half day. Guess what happened after? All day kindergarten still came in. So it's, uh, and I respect that because that sure. is the decision and the authority of the school board. Um, that is, you know, I, I respect their job. And so I don't think I need to know what $47,000 equates to. Perfect. Nothing against Leanne or anybody else, but I trust you. Thank you. But then, then I'll look to know that Chris is here too. Um, I thought part of this meeting is we as a finance committee, I mean, a lot of the other town council me members have not been part of mm -hmm. conversations. So we were trying to gear up, as I understood, we're trying to gear up for Wednesday night to come forth and say the finance committee's recommendation is X, Y, and Z, and be able to explain to those, to our peers that aren't here, our colleagues, what those choices are. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to get clarity. So no, if so I think what would be helpful is is sort of like Tom did. At least he's you know he's given this top 
matrix that says, yeah. okay, with this, this is what it means. I think that would just be helpful as documentation that we can share. That, the I numbers think, are literally exactly the same. I, would, okay, I could then play out 50 different scenarios no, if it no, was I, eight teachers in four ed techs or nine teachers in, you know, but it's the, the, the same sort of. Yeah, I think, I think we're all we're asking for is just, you know, a document from you saying that so we can put in front of our colleagues saying this is where we are. And, and, and then we can have that conversation as a full council about what the choices are. Um, and I don't know if we need to answer the 3% question tonight. I mean, I guess that, that really is a full council conversation. Um, and probably the reval is a full council yeah. conversation. Um, so with that, so, I don't... So, so to end the school part, I wanted to recommend, I think that the document you provided, I, I thought I had a copy with me, but... Yes. Um, the one where it showed um, 10, um, 10 staff positions is equivalent oh, yeah. to 750. Yeah. You had five. You, you broke it down. Because yeah. I think we had asked originally it was like 250, 500, and then 750. Mm -hmm. That document you provided before I thought was um, was clear. So if that can be maybe as part of the conversation. Because I think that was, it was pretty clear. Yeah. If you want $750,000 reduced in the school budget, it was going to, it's 10 positions. That's pretty clear. Where those positions are, with all due respect to the council, really should not matter to us because it's the school board's determination on where those positions have to happen. Um, so I, I'm clear in understanding that, but I, I, I agree with Peter. It needs to be better understood and clear to everyone what the impact is. Sure. And maybe just a little more in detail. Yeah, when you were talking, absolutely. No, when you were talking about the IT expenditures, you know, I guess the question would be what, what could be deferred to next year? Is it the 218 or is it some other number or just a better idea so we know yeah. where we land. Yeah. So Chris, to bring you up to speed. <laughs> For the whole meeting up until now? Yeah. Um, we'll tell you in five seconds. <laughs> Tom he came up, he, Tom, give me a copy. Tom came up with some recommendations for the town. It was about up here. Just so you don't get it quick. If you have any quick questions. Tom came up at the bottom, <laughs> Rubik. Those are things, I think, I think you attended most of the finance committee meetings and they shouldn't be a surprise. Mm -hmm. We added a couple other things that Tom was up for sure. um, Yeah, a couple of vehicles and a... Uh, I see, I see. Oh, you're you're have my, my fancy list? Yeah. 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 You're, you're almost a position. I can... I can yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. um, and then, Chris, I, the other conversation we did have is on the overlay on this sheet where Tom has the overlay and he puts put in 140. Mm -hmm. We're going to bump that what was the number? 350, 50? By 350,000 as a recommendation to the assessor when he makes that judgment in August <clears throat> as to what that number should be. We based the 350 on going from 460 uh, already paid to uh, I don't know, eight, yeah, yeah, the 800,000. And it's only a recommendation because yep. we don't have the authority to tell him to do okay. anything. So just so I'm clear, are, were these agreed to and adopted, or are these just yes. present these, these reductions? We, it's our recommendation to the full council. That would be the first amendment is what happens in the process. And we did vote, too. Yeah. Okay. Right, Tom? Yes, you do. That will be the first amendment. Yep. I'll prepare it as an amendment on behalf of the committee. Um, before you leave the, the school, there was some suggestion around the request uh, that the superintendent had for the additional funding. Do you want to take some definitive action in that regard? You had conversation, I didn't hear. The 47859? I suppose if you do nothing, that's action as well. Yeah. But I just want to make sure we didn't leave that uh, undone. I appreciate the reminder. But I think that the final conversation that goes into the tax rate, which is what you've been trying to drive at, is now about the va the commercial valuation. Yeah. And I guess the question, I, I'll ask the question of this group, is that that seems like it needs to be a full, robust conversation of the full council and about how that's going to be modeled and considered. And Certainly there, it definitely will occur there. Uh, yeah. I, I think the town manager has modeled it so that we're in a position to understand what that might be? I have, and I, I think it, it would be appropriate for this committee if you feel strongly one way or another by way of simple recommendation and to have a coherent conversation about where you're ending, that's a big factor in the final number. So um, 
I guess I could model it a number of different ways and be prepared to share those results depending how the full council uh, chooses to come down on the matter. But um, well, I, 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 first, from my perspective, I think that piece is going to weigh heavily on the recommendation coming out of this committee, isn't it? Or is it not? Yeah. So this is the last meeting before we give our recommendation. So is that, let's have it. That's, yeah. Let's, so let's so I, I, um, I, I just to make sure that we're legal, I guess, in some ways. So. For the purposes of the minutes, is um, Chris now a voting member and Bill? Yes. Um, I just want to make sure, just just for the record, for legal purposes. So the, um, I would like to make a motion that the manager present to us at our next meeting what the estimates are based upon the new valuation, and that it be included in the tax um, computation and in the presentation so that we understand that what is. And the reason why is because I'm actually referring back to the policy that some people um, only seem to read half of. The very last sentence in that policy is that in the event of a full town-wide valuation, it may be necessary to make appropriate adjustments to the methodology. We are in a full valuation. We're starting with the commercial. The residential piece comes next. It is reasonable for us to include the commercial valuation in our adjustments to the methodology and understanding where this community is going to be in one year. Absolutely within the policy and within the intent of what we what we did when we passed that policy um, We've talked for four years Peter you and I have been on the same term Chris you were on the school board originally, but you were part of that conversation long-range planning requires forecasting This is a forecast if we're going to accept those things that we think are appropriate based upon the expenditure side We also need to do so on the revenue side That is our fiduciary responsibility so um, I concur with those comments. Um, I guess my question would be, you mentioned having this information for the last meeting, our next meeting. You mean, you mean the joint? Uh, we, yeah, we, we don't have another meeting before. We have a joint 16th. Well, but that's, that's, that's a joint one, I think, right? Isn't that with both? On the 15th? Yeah. Yes. We, yeah, so. and it needs to be part of that conversation. That would be. It needs to be out. Right, right. But, well, we're dancing around. We're dancing around, not wanting to touch it for some reason, so, which I think is more political. But I think than the town manager is ready to present. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a slight change. There's an extra twenty-eight thousand dollars you agreed to tonight that well, I did not include. So it would frankly only get better. Um, I seem to only have three copies here. There's usually only three board members. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll look on. I'll look on with you. So what I'm passing out the, it requires some reduction, but. Uh, High level, it does include, it assumed my 176.522. That number is now 204,000 or something like that. It also includes the $350,000 for overlay. So um, on the bottom of the sheet, you'll see we run the, uh, the typical optimistic mid range and cautious based on the uh, methodology policy. The bottom portions, there's another kind of, I'll call it optimistic mid range and cautious with respect to the reval. And um, Based on our best information, we have talked to the consultants. It's in process, so I don't have any concrete information from them. But um, based on our best information, we're looking at the optimistic impact of the reveal being a, an additional $166 million, the mid-range being about 133 and the very cautious estimate at 100 And so you can see there's any number of choices, your tolerance level. Um, if you're asking for my recommendation, I would be cautious on the annual growth in value. There's a number of things in play that uh, I'm aware of and I think ought to be considered there. Um, and I'm comfortable having you use the mid-range for the reval uh, based on what I know. So just so I'm, I'm following along, Tom, um, which, which numbers do you want for the, for the, for the valuation? I've highlighted the row. Uh, okay. That I think uh, is, I have a level of comfort in suggesting you consider, and, and, okay. and that's based on the cautious estimate of annual growth and value based on the methodology and the mid range of the reval impact. Okay. So, to, bring, to kind of bring this around, if you don't mind um, asking, um, in comparison, because we've thrown so many numbers there about the commercial reval impact, so originally. I think that the uh, comment was we could experience $175 million in additional commercial rebound. So based on your new estimates within this model, um, what percentage of that 175 is being used to increase to get to these numbers? Well, the mid-range is that 133, so I don't yeah. have a percentage, but it's probably 80% of that number. 
Okay. So seventy five percent of that number. So you, I think you increased it. So that mid range of one thirty three. I think that was that double from what was originally presented. No, the one seventy seven, one seventy five. We talked about way back at the time you yeah. funded it is now one sixty six in this analysis. It's the top end, if you. Will. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Right. And then no, I get yep. Yeah. We're, we picked, frankly, 100 as a very cautious one and picked the midpoint for mid-range. Which uh, is in I line, that. I believe, with our policy of Stretch. conservative, mid, yeah. and aggressive. Because the top range of 166 is not what was originally discussed. I mean, not that we realize that it could be lower, but it could actually even be higher. Mm -hmm. so can, can you speak to it, I think? <clears throat> I thought we've always said in the past, and the reason we came up with the formula in the first place is, you know, the tax assessor is supposed to be completely independent of, of all of us. You know, it's a kind of an independent decision. The reason we get into this whole estimating game is that we, the tax assessor, doesn't weigh in on what the total assessed value is until August. Right. And I'd just be curious whether the assessor, as we think about this, would attest to any of these values, because you just said these values come from a consultant. Um, and, and I just I want to avoid a situation where last year we, we used the mid range and then there was a sixty million dollar surprise. Mm -hmm. um, I just how do we how can how do we have any how can we pick e any one of these numbers? With, can, can the assessor apply? Is he willing to attest or certify some number as a reasonable number based on what he knows that we can use in our decision making time frame? I'm a little nervous about using a consultant's estimate. I beg your pardon. I, I, if I said con, this is the consultant's input, is not, it is not. Their so process so is still underway. So where did where did the numbers come from? Well, the top end is based on uh, what we know. The average commercial industrial <laughs> properties are below market, and we we've, we've extrapolated that across uh, that portion of the tax base. Right, but you've used some table to get there. We have that same ta table available that we could use on an ongoing basis, but we choose not to. So this is a change in our methodology of how we're going about uh, coming no, up I with would, this. I, I would disagree with that assessment. Well, I, I, so let me, let me back up. So I, I think we can talk about this all we want here. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger hurdle for us to think about is, and Sean made reference to it, what is our message going to be to our community? They're going to come out and vote for the budget, and what is their expectations about what the numbers are? I just think we need to think about that. Yeah. And, and if, if we put <coughs> something out, again, if our goal was to get the budget to pass the first time, because I don't think any of us want another four months of sure. all that we've gone through. Sure. I think there's a lift. We need to think about how we communicate this right. so when people come to the polls, and at that point in time, the municipal budget will be done. Right. I just think I think we've got this needs to be well thought out about how how we get to yes. So so I I, I appreciate that approach, um, but I, I I think it's it's difficult to the to predict to the level of precision that you're asking for from an assessment perspective. But then turn around and say, but it needs to be vague enough for the entire population to accept and agree to what's going to be out there. So I my approach to this is. Um, I, I think we, we address the policy of, of the assessed value, which I, I, it sounds like we've started to, or we, we, Sean I thought was pretty eloquent when I first came in of what that policy was, and I would concur with that. So I think we are applying the policy correctly. Then the question becomes, what's our goal here? And our goal, our initial stated goal was a 3% or less tax increase. Right. right. That, 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 bear with me for a second. I'm going. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. So, while I, I think we're doing the, the yeoman's work of going through and identifying areas that we may consider to be um, non-critical or areas that we could put off, issues we could put off until another date, I think, based on these numbers that are in front of us on this sheet, I, I'd say we more than adequately met our goal without any adjustments to the budget. So my question would then turn around and be, why is it OK to do that forward projection based on challenges that we may have and be conservative in our, our approach to a budget based on potential downsides later on, but not turn around and reverse that and say, 
based on what we see here, as an estimate, I, I give you, it's not, we, we won't know for sure until August, why wouldn't we use that same methodology and that same mindset and apply it here and say, we see a, a, uh, an impact here that is a positive impact. So we have to take that into account on some level. Now, to me, the argument isn't whether we do that or not. The argument to me is, which one of these scenarios do we choose? Because if we were looking at reductions in, in, or, or challenges to the budget, that's the approach we would be taking. Which, which estimate do we feel is appropriate here? So I think the methodology is sound. I think it's the same methodology that we use going forward every year. I think the debate needs to center around which one of these options do we want to Message. utilize moving forward. And, and, and staff's made their recommendation of which one they suggest. Um, I think the debate should center around if there are other ones in here in this scenario, what, what might those be? What, which ones do, would we prefer to go with? And maybe we want to be ultra conservative and ultra aggressive and say, you know, we, we think it's going to be the lowest valuation, uh, lowest added valuation um, with the, um, you know, uh, lowest valuation possible and the, and the, the highest um, impact on the tax rate. And, and, let, and let me, <clears throat> I understand all that, but let me take a different perspective, I think. Again, it goes back to what, when we set our goals last fall, that the tax increase would be no more than 3%, the reval wasn't on the table. So, so what? Well, I, I, let me finish. Like, okay. So I think we made that commitment. We made that commitment at the first read that we would not approve a budget that was over 3%. We didn't mention the rebound. So I understand that. Well, well, I, no, no, let me, but let me. No, no, so I, just, I just want to correct you. you. We didn't say about a budget that was over 3% tax rate because we. Uh, tax rate, yeah. Tax rate. Sorry. Yeah. So I think all I'm trying to say is I think that's what our constituents heard. Sure. And that's their expectation. Yep. I'm just saying I think by doing this, mm -hmm. one way we could approach this is stay with the methodology we are, but I, I think. If, if, if we go with this methodology, people are going to feel that we didn't deliver the 3% because okay. of the rebound. I, I that's the perception. Right. So all I'm but, saying is we need to be aware of that because right. I think that's going to be a challenge. And I, so my key concern with that is I don't see how the methodology is different though, right? I don't because, because we're using the same policies and the same statistical analysis and the same mathematical formulas. We're just adding a variable to it like we would any other variable. The, the, the difference is... The difference is from a methodology, from a policy point of view, you used historical data, we had a formula, we all agreed upon it. What we're doing is we're extrapolating what we think, mm -hmm. the revals in process, mm -hmm. we're using some other source of, it isn't our assessor, it isn't anything we've dealt with before, we're taking the market value as X and extrapolating it. Well, so, and so, and, uh, if it's so, helpful, so, I presented it both ways. On this sheet that you're looking yes. at, the top number is exactly from the methodology you've adopted. Yeah, yeah, and then the so scenarios uh, of the reval impact yeah. obviously are down below. Yeah. And do keep in mind, you're doing some pretty unique investments this year. You get four hundred fifteen thousand dollars in appropriated money for a residential reval. That didn't happen last year. Won't happen again in future fiscal years. You just added three fifty to settle tax liability. That won't happen again next year. So, um, and I, I don't disagree with either of those decisions. But I, I think in considering where you finally end up, you've made some. Uh, decisions, I think, for the right reasons, but they have impact on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Could you, at the time you set your 3%, thought that you would have done either of those things within that goal? I, <coughs> I don't know the answer, but I, I'm just saying there's things have changed. You've made decisions, and there are impacts of those decisions. And, and I guess I looked on it, look at it this way. So I, my goal and my promise when we, when we set that goal was I, we would deliver a tax rate to the town of 3% or less. We didn't talk about what went into that or how that happened or what we were going to do. But we, we agreed that that would be our goal. That's what we would deliver. I think if we deliver that, we've met our obligation. I think now we're talking philosophies on whether it's the right way to meet it or not or what, what the ultimate outcome is going to be. So I think we're making predictions no matter how we do it because we do that every year. The assessed value is, is always the prediction. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I hear you, and I, I totally understand what you're saying. I'm just yeah. saying I think... And maybe, you know, I think if, if we want to get a budget passed the first time yeah. in June, yeah. 
and we, I think we're going to have a situation again where we have dueling numbers out there. Everybody's going to pick numbers to use because they're all. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, I think we can convince ourselves, but our real job is right. how do we convince everybody else? Well, I, 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 and I understand, but I, I, I guess I don't con concur with that. And the reason I don't think our job is to convince others, I mean, we have to make a decision based on the data we have in front of us. We have to do that every year. And if we, if we believe the data is sound. I, we can't control what other groups are going to use. We have that problem every year. People are going to, you know, pick whichever number they want. That's why we have that challenge of saying whatever comes out of finance, whatever we agree to as a council, those are the numbers we're going to stick to and we're going to use. So I, 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 I understand where you're coming from, because we go through it every year. I, I guess I just don't see, I don't see how a, a, a adjusting our normal protocol or our normal procedure to try and avoid something that we don't know if that's the way to avoid it or not. We're, we're dealing with speculation on the back end of it. We are assuming what it's going to take to get there, and I've got to deal with what was our goal of, of tax rate, and that's that's kind of where I'm looking at. Yeah, Sean, sorry. Yeah, um, so just to address a couple of points, I guess, um, finer details, I guess. So first, I, I, I hope there's not a notion that this is just some fictitious number. The, um, uh, the valuation has always been recommended by the manager in every budget I've ever dealt with, and I think I've done 13 of these. So um, we do have an experienced person, no matter who that budget manager has been, and I've um, lived through three. Um, so um, it's not just some consultant giving us the number. He uses the methodology that is reasonable based upon his experience and based upon the experience of the town. So I trust his judgment in that. That's what he's paid for it, um, to do. Um, the second is that um, based on that judgment, um, it's not unreasonable to take into consideration the numbers that he's given us based upon our own policy that says that we will take that into consideration and the methodology will be adjusted to be able to do that. Um, when you get into the messaging, and I'm going to be the skunk in the garden, let's be honest about what we're dealing with right now. There's going to be people in this town that use the budget process to, to continue advocating for their issue around the recall vote. And they're going to use that no matter what we come in at, no matter what is going on, and that's a fact that we have to deal with. There's going to be those that no matter what our number is, they're still going to sit there and say it's not low enough. The issue is whether we as counselors are comfortable in, in believing and understanding and truly accepting the fact that we've done our job in delivering a budget that continues the services that our constituents, which means the entire town, has become accustomed to. And does this budget do that? No matter what the tax rate is, does this budget do that? And it does. And um, while we can sit there and argue about whether or not we use, I think the, the, the lowest number is um, a negative 0.39%, meaning that in essence um, the homeowners will get a reduction of seven cents on every thousand dollars to the highest of, if we don't even accept this um, new analysis, the highest is 83 cents increase. The question is, do we have good services? Are they the same quality that we provided last year, and will our citizens still value them? I support the budget based upon what we've discussed and based upon the adjustments and based upon this new analysis because I think it's reasonable within both spectrums and how far the pendulum swings on both sides. Because somewhere it's going to rest. We don't know where it's going to rest. We have no idea. And by the way, we made a best, um, a best, um, you know, best business judgment last year. A totally uninfluential entity determined that we were wrong, which was the state legislature. It wasn't our fault. So for us to beat ourselves over what happened last year in comparison to where we are now, we at least know where we are now because there's, there's no debate about school funding. We're not getting any. I, I, I remember seeing a, an email today about what does it happen because the state didn't pass the, the funding bill. It doesn't matter. We don't get any money from the state. Uh, minimum receipt. No, right. I mean, we get minimal receivership, but I mean, we're already at bare bones. Um, so I, I think that we need to understand where we are and what do we accept within that range. And are we comfortable with that? And you know what? Um, and we've had this, uh, Peter, there's constituents that you serve that I understand and I respect them. They're not going to be the same ones that really, you know, that might support other people. And I have constituents that are the same. Yeah, there's yeah, a crossover. And there's different advocacies within the group. And we have to try to balance all of them because yeah. neither one of them are right by themselves. Neither one of them are. So I'm comfortable with this budget based upon the presentations of all of our department heads, the two managers that we have, um, and understanding where we might be based on the rebound. 
So for this group on this, and what's what's the will? What's what sort of what, what would you like to come out of here as a recommendation? Is there a motion? I I, I would move that we accept the uh, the calculation as presented by the manager uh, with his scenario of the cautious with 133 million. Sixty-two thousand seven hundred and eighty in value in added valuation, uh, resulting in a uh, increase in the tax rate of, if I understand this correctly, Tom, one point four eight percent. Might be slightly less than that. One point four four now. One point four four, okay. including the extra work you've done. But with all due respect, I'd like to present it with this kind of myriad of options, just so people understand. I totally. Um, yeah, right. I think this presentation, the last three groups, yeah. should be exactly, it should okay. be on it. They need to see the whole so range. We can put that up on the website too as well, in addition to the, the explanation that goes with it. For sure. It would go out with the packet. Right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that, but you asked, that, that would be my motion. If, if I would call on the question now, I would, that, that would be my motion. For all three? Yes. Based on, I, I would second that. Let me just, yeah, I mean, this sheet Tom's going to show, including the yeah, all the methodology. Yeah, right? all, all three. Yes. The, the three yeah. rows. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, the nine rows. Last nine rows. Is it all helpful to have a recommendation as to which one I may suggest you? That, that at least I have a level of comfort with. Well, I thought that's what the highlighted one. It is. And yeah, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Would yeah. you like the same for the whole council? But, but but Sean, you just said. Do you mean twelve rows? I, that's I, fine. I wasn't, Either way, it's a present. It's for presentation purposes. Yeah, so I'll take whatever you. Yeah, I just think all the information needs yeah. to be provided. All the twelve rows. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, you, he made a motion. You second it. Yes. All those in favor of the recommendation. Okay. Thank you. All right. With that, any, anybody? The, anybody else? Any closing comments? I think we. Um, future meeting dates. We do have scheduled yeah. May fifteenth, six to eight, a joint finance committee meeting. Um, and then with that, at the end, I'll, I'll open it up for public. Actually, sorry, one, one I, yeah. I, I hate to do this coming in late. Um, I, I have some, based on what happened this week, um, I, I don't even know the composition of the school's finance committee, to be honest with you. So what is going to be the topic of discussion on the joint finance committee meeting when we don't even know the makeup of the committee itself? Well, here it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, does that present any challenges? Uh, or technically, technically on the fifteenth, Jody and Carrie are still school board members. Yes. Okay. Um, currently, they're still school board members, so okay. they we didn't even know we were going to be sitting up here today, or else the uh -huh. whole finance committee would have. Uh -huh. came. What's the agenda for the for the meeting? If we we accomplished, I thought we accomplished a lot vis-a-vis -vis the school tonight. So. What I can provide, what I thought was asked of me was, um, this is my vision for what I think you asked. Um, <laughs> that looks good. Very clear. <laughs> <laughs> looks like this. Um, I thought you wanted me to play out the scenarios much like the town manager mm -hmm. did. Although okay. it looks similar, we have yes. three other variables in addition to just the full-time FTE okay. of, a, of a teaching position. I don't know that we'd have to have a meeting for that. We'll I can share just share it. that right. with you um, via email or however you would like it shared. And make sure that goes up in any public packet, obviously, that goes out as well, that it's all clear to you where to find it, portal. what it states. Yeah, we can put that in the budget portal. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. So I, yeah. I, I, I unless you guys really want to have another meeting. No, let me, let's, uh, clearly, uh, I don't fine. have enough of them. I just yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me, let me, we'll head on then. Okay. Let's tentatively yeah. hold it, but I'll let you know. Okay. okay. And there, I'm glad. Um, the reason why we always had it before is because there was always pretty significant adjustments. Yeah. Right. And we needed to understand what the impact was. So, I mean, given our current circumstance, you know, if we don't need to have another meeting, let's be respectful, be respectful to our families. <laughs> and the public, who's going well, to want to come I know, and the public. Right. So, with that, and we, we'll, we'll get back. Any public comment tonight before we close? <coughs> Uh, Larry Hartwell, 9 Kerrigan Drive. Um, 
I think you should follow the policy. The policy is unambiguous. We didn't plan on, on uh, tax reevaluation. We're just barely at this point starting on the commercial one. And we haven't got, gotten into the starting blocks on the, on the residential. Also, um, you know, it says that when we have revaluations, re it's supposed to be revenue neutral. And so this seems to be our history of we had the Wentworth surplus funds, $2 million. So that was a one-off deal that reduced our tax mill rate that year. Then we had the fund balance of $2 million that we used last year, uh, again, reducing the mill rate. Now we're coming up with $100 million or $135 million in commercial that's out there to reduce the tax rate. Um, like I say, we haven't even done the valuation. I'd like us to stay with the policy. We vote on the 3%. That may not be possible. But if you're going to uh, pass the budget, let's use, let's, Let's use the valuation that the policy calls for and say, that, okay, we can't meet the 3%. It's actually 4.6 if we're adding in the, the overlay of, of $350,000. Let's just call it what it is. Use the valuation that, that you guys, you have had set down as a policy in 2016 the, the, that has been computed by the assistant town manager using that policy and which is in the tax computation that was given to us at the initial presentation. So that's all I ask. Let's be honest here. Otherwise, th this whole process has been a waste of everyone's time because it's like, okay, but we're not, not making any, we're not making any cuts. We're going to rely on this valuation to say, oh, look at that. We came in at 2%. When our spending is going up 5 or 6%, and if we, use, if we didn't have this valuation, to reach out for, and I don't know where we get the rabbit next year, but if we didn't have that one, um, you know, we would be talking about 4.7% increase. And if that's what it is, then that's what it is. But let's be honest with the taxpayers. Thank you, Mike. Anybody else? Okay. We got a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, can you All on <laughs> <laughs> That's coming, Chris. <laughs> <laughs>